Did you know that Warren Buffett, one of the wealthiest individuals on the planet, still lives in a modest house he bought in the 1950s for $31,500? Talk about living below your means. So how do you create wealth to begin with? You see, the journey to financial prosperity isn't just about making money. It's about the habits that shape how you manage that money. So, in today's video, we'll explore eight habits that are keeping you from reaching that Buffett-level wealth. These aren't just tips. These are life changers, the kind that can transform your financial world from the ground up. So, without further ado, let's get into it. How often do you pause to consider your small, almost invisible decisions regarding your money? These are the seemingly minor choices that we encounter during our daily routines like an unplanned stop at our favorite cafe, post-workout, or during a work break. It's these subtle, habitual choices that, over time, sculpt our financial landscape. Not all habits wield the same influence, particularly in finances. Some habits, like termites, silently damaging a house, can quietly erode your financial foundation. Warren Buffett, a sage in the investing world, regards smart spending not just as a practice, but as a habit akin to maintaining a healthy diet or consistent exercise routine. Developing sound financial habits is a process that can markedly impact wealth accumulation over time. Buffett frequently highlights essential habits like prioritizing savings and meticulously tracking cash flow. He's not just an advocate of these principles, he embodies them. Skipping out on a budget or just ignoring the one you've got is like trying to drive somewhere new without a map or GPS. You might eventually get there, but expect a lot of wrong turns and detours. A budget isn't just a bunch of numbers on a spreadsheet. It's your financial compass guiding every money move you make. Creating a budget is a vital financial habit, like checking the weather before heading out. It's all about knowing what's coming in and going out of your accounts each month. Without this crucial info, you're flying blind. And before you know it, you could be spending more than you earn, landing in a world of debt and a credit score nightmare. The good news? Well, there are tons of ways to set up a budget. The key is to find a method that fits like a glove with your lifestyle. Maybe it's an app that tracks every penny, or perhaps it's a good old-fashioned spreadsheet. Whatever works for you. And here's the golden nugget. If you can save 20, 30, or even half of what you earn each month, you're not just saving money, you're building a launch pad for financial success. This oversight embodies a simple yet widely ignored truth. The road to debt isn't paved by how much you earn, but by how you manage what you earn. Warren Buffett, a titan in investment and finance, has consistently voiced his aversion to accumulating debt. If I had one piece of advice to give to young people of, you know, that across the board, it would be just to don't get in debt. <laughs> Speaking to an audience at the University of Notre Dame in 1991, he highlighted a critical observation. He witnessed numerous individuals falter due to liquor and leverage, with leverage here referring to the difficult path of borrowed money. The CEO of Berkshire Hathaway especially cautions against the seductive dangers of credit card debt. He points out the crippling effect of high interest rates, which can quickly escalate into a financial nightmare if bills are not paid on time. Buffett offers a glimpse into his financial philosophy, stating that his current wealth would have been unattainable had he fallen into the habit of borrowing. Here's a hard-hitting reality about a habit that many fall prey to, impulse buying. Warren Buffett, in his typical succinct style, once said, if you buy things you do not need, soon you will have to sell things you need. This profound statement captures the essence of impulse purchasing, a significant and often underestimated drain on our finances. It's a stark reminder of the thin line separating wants from needs. Buffett's wisdom is a call to action. By resisting the lure of unnecessary buys, we free up our resources for more meaningful financial goals. Think about it. Every impulse purchase is a missed opportunity to save or invest towards your future. It's like choosing a momentary thrill over long-term financial health. Impulse buys might seem small and harmless at the moment, but they're like drops of water that eventually fill a bucket. 
Before you know it, these little purchases can balloon into a significant financial burden, keeping you perpetually in a state of just getting by. The key to breaking this cycle? Plan and budget. Before you shop, make a list of what you truly need. Now let's talk about a crucial investment strategy some overlook. Yet it's like the golden rule in investing. Diversification. Diversification, is, as practiced generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Diversification is a protection against... You might think Buffett has got some complex, secret strategy up his sleeve, but nope. His advice has been pretty consistent and surprisingly straightforward. At Berkshire's 2021 annual meeting, he laid it out again. I recommend the S&P 500 index fund and have for a long, long time to people. The best single thing you could have done on March 11th, 1942, when I bought my first stock, was just buy an index fund and, 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 and never look at a headline, never think about stocks anymore, just like you would do if you bought a farm. You just buy the farm and let the, let the tenant farmer run it for you. And I pointed out that if you'd put $10,000 in an index fund that reinvested dividends, and I paused for a moment to let the audience try and guess how much it amount to. And it would come to $51 million. So why the S&P 500? Simple. It's like getting a slice of the U.S. stock market in one neat package. When you invest in the S&P 500, you're not just betting on one horse, but spreading your chips across the table. You get a piece of numerous industries, which means your risk isn't tied to the fate of just one company. It's like not putting all of your eggs in one basket in case that basket decides to take a tumble. A study from the University of Scranton dropped an absolute bombshell. 92% of folks who miss their goals do so because they didn't bother to plan. Yep, you heard that right. Now think about it. No plan for your cash? That's like leaving your wallet open at a shopping mall. Hello, impulse buys and bye-bye wise decisions. And sure, you might be raking in the big bucks, but without a plan, it's like trying to fill a bucket with a hole in it. It just doesn't work. Here's the real kicker. Not planning your finances is like saying no thanks to planning for your future or those rainy days. You're basically at the mercy of the wind, hoping it doesn't blow too hard. Remember, in the world of money, winging it is definitely not the way to go. You might think that quickly jumping in and out of stocks is a fast track to wealth, but hold on a second. Warren Buffett, the oracle himself, has some crucial insights on this. According to him, this kind of rapid trading could actually be a setback to your investment growth. Why? Well, it's all about the taxes and fees. Every time you flip a stock, you're potentially raising capital gains taxes. And let's not forget those pesky commission fees. They might seem small on their own, but add them up over a year and you've got yourself a hefty bill. Buffett advises thinking like a business owner, not just a trader. If you owned an outstanding business, you wouldn't sell it off at the drop of a hat, right? The same goes for stocks. Holding on to a small piece of a great business with the same dedication as if you owned the whole thing, that's the Buffett way. Thinking long term is critical here. Have you ever heard of lifestyle inflation? It's what happens when your expenses magically rise to meet or exceed your income. Let's say you get a sweet pay raise and think, hey, why not treat myself to that fancy new car? That, my friends, is lifestyle inflation in action. It's like a silent savings killer creeping up every time your wallet gets a bit thicker. This concept runs totally counter to an essential Buffett rule. Do not save what is left after spending. Instead, spend what is left after saving. Wise words, right? And Buffett isn't just preaching, he's living it. Despite being one of the wealthiest folks on the planet, he's the epitome of frugality. Take his living situation, for example. He's spent decades in the exact Omaha, Nebraska house that he snagged in the 1950s for $31,500. I could buy any house in the world, and, and, and I don't want any other house than the one I'm in. You know, and that house is in a middle-class neighborhood. I'm happy in a pair of khakis and a sweater, so I, I, don't, I, I don't need fancy clothes. I don't need fancy food. Do you have an iPad? I do not have an iPad. iPhone? No. And his cars? Well, let's just say he's not racing around in the latest sports model. He sticks with modest, reliable vehicles and drives them into the ground. Buffett's approach is a masterclass in avoiding unnecessary splurges. 
it boils down to a super simple formula. Spend less, save more. So as we wrap up, which of these habits will you change first to start your journey towards financial greatness? Comment down below and thanks for watching.